Well, our best memories will be from into town on a Saturday, about the mid 50s, early mid 50s, and going to the Central Cinema to a matinee. Mm -hmm. The cost at the time either four pence or six pence, depending on the price of seats at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sonic. Yeah, yeah the Sonic owned it at the time. And then that time you'd have a couple more pennies to buy what we call a lucky bag. Chance your luck away from the money. <laughs> Johnson Shop. Yeah. Birchgrove, yeah. Yeah, we lived there from Birchgrove to Johnson Shop and they did give a local service of essential groceries and ice cream. Which as far as we were concerned with the ice cream was the big attraction for young kids. It was awful expensive. Ice cream was very expensive. It's worth when money is scarce. Everything is scarce. It's expensive money is scarce. Yeah. Yeah. But we had other connections with the town as well. My father, actually, I was, I was born in the Dunla Barrett. The Dunla Barrett. Dunla Barrett in Dunla Street. Yeah. Upstairs in the Barrett. My mother was a nurse. She was a maternity nurse around here for about 20 years. And for 30 years. 30 yeah. years. Well, well, yeah. 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 And you know something? She never had a baby there, no maternity. Because we have her five. And we've gone through them to have a look at them, you know? But anyway, uh, my father had the timber works in town here and he exported from the canal. They cut the timber up in the... Um, I had cut the timber all around County Galway and County Roscommon. Mm -hmm. There was crews out there. At that time it was all labour. It was an intensive labour work at the time. And they uh, bring it to the sawmill behind the pub in Dunla Street and it would be cut air and split into lads. And he'd fleet of trucks and he'd bring it up to Dublin, as well as bring a turf up to Phoenix Park during the emergency, what's called the emergency years. And then he had a base in Tundalk in Dublin, where the boats, the, the, the barge, the barge boats or barges were loaded here of Shannon Bridge. It was taken up by horse. Horse pulled them up to Dublin at the time. And I walked around it yesterday, and I walked around this morning at half past four because I had to get up. So I walked around it. And, uh, I was here maybe seven or eight years ago. I come, I come back to funerals and all that, but I have a look around. I have a look around and uh, every so often. But this is the best I've seen it for a long time, you know. Obviously, there's, there's a big change going on here as well. And I think I just wonder if this canal have anything to do with that. And for the future, I would recommend I see a sign up there about Greenway. Get it if you can get it. Because it's going to bring a load of tourism into your town. You saw the difference about the mail. You want to put so if you go up to the north of Two Bay, from Westport to Ackham, each town has boomed. Newport and Mulrenny were falling apart, and now they're fantastic. And they're buzzing. They're full of people and bikes. People walk up there. They will drive up part of it, and it's fantastic. It just brings so many tourists. I take away, uh, from the memories of years ago, where it was a good bustling town, but it went down badly back in the 90s and noughties. But what I noticed about today is the tendons, which have improved immensely, the streets, footpaths, everything, painted buildings. It looks pretty good today. And it's lovely to see some of the old families, like the Clark's shop and the end of the land with the new hotel, that some of the old families have survived the downfall of those for years. And I still see a, even still see a coffee name up on the wall down in the square. <laughs> I want to say one, one more thing. Remember the, the idle wall? When we were young, my mother said, don't sit in the idle wall because you'll never get a job if you sit in the idle wall. Two things I want to say. So I want to be still that. And I sat up and adjusted. I had a photograph taken. <laughs> so, well, I, mother, wherever you are, you were right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you two things about it. You never sit on the idle wall, you sit on the lazy wall. <laughs> sorry, the lazy wall, sorry. We have an idle one wall. more mistake I made when I, when I complimented their land and hotel. It's the Mosque land, who was the proprietor. It was right. around, see there, the new, the new road was the cleanliness, how the grass is mowed, everything is perfection. I think we must acknowledge what the guys in Garbury done for us as well. We went up there and at the time we started off, there was nobody going to, sec nobody going to secondary school from around us. Uh, Tony White was only one side in and out. And Austin, 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 Austin Whalen done two years and he left. Yeah. And uh, I started going and Huey went. The whole Johnny Whalen made Johnny the move. Went, yeah. The whole swad of people went in together at the same time, you know. And we cycled up and down there and the borders were up there. Well, it was a fantastic place. And there was no pressure on you to become a priest or anything. I think it was more of an athletic school, a sports college. They had pitches, swings. Rope climbers, tennis. Uh, but I look when I look back and see all oh, the sport they had, it's all encouraging, encouraging that sport. And of course, rugby. My father Page had come in at a time and it changed from being a rugby college to a GA college. But uh, Christy Glynn kept the rugby going at the time, you know, fair play to him. Because Christy Glynn and Father Ryan 
And as coaches, the, the, the head of the guys, the head coaches around the world now that they were so good at it. When I look at the rugby matches, and the basics that Christy James taught about rugby still apply, but they're not applying. That's why we're not losing, we're not winning more matches than we could do, you know?